You are watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know about children and vision problems. Uh, according to my first guest, many children, uh, millions of, uh, of, of American children, have vision problems that interfere with the way they learn. And it many times it can be corrected. Well, with us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Remick. Dr. Remick, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Randy. So before we get into today's topic, and, and you are a professor and work at Western University of Health, Health Sciences. Correct. And uh, I guess your official title is Director of Community Outreach. So Correct. tell me a little bit about your role there. I work at the College of Optometry, which was started in 2009. Okay. But Western University of Health Sciences in Pomona has nine professional programs. Okay. And optometry is uh, one of the newer colleges that they started. They're an op osteopathic medical school. Okay. They have pharmacists, they teach pharmacists, they teach graduate nursing, veterinarians, physical therapy. And, and the optometry school is one of the newer colleges. Okay, so you, you know, the goal with this, and we've talked, the goal with this program, and uh, I was connected to you through a, a Dr. Chang, an ophthalmologist, yes. said, Randy, they need more of the public to come in. Yes. Because you're a teaching facility. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, optometry is a postgraduate program. Okay. And it's similar to becoming a dentist. You get your four year bachelor's degree in a science, and then you come to Western University College of Optometry for four years. All you right. get all the training you, you need to become a successful optometrist, but a lot of that is working with patients. And so we need to have a, to lot, train of, the other a, a lot of the public to come in so that our students will become the best optometrists. You've been doing this a long time, by the way. Because uh, we're talking about kids today, but yes. you've been working around kids for a long time. Yes, I've been a, pri a private practitioner of optometry for over 25 years. Is that right? You wrote a book, I did. Eyes on Track. I did. Okay. So this is, this is your passion. This is yes, all you it do. Is. Yes, it is. What do you like most about it, by the way? What I love is finding someone that's struggling and never knew it was because of their vision. They thought kids that, in particular, especially children, but even adults that always thought that uh, they maybe were told that they had 20/20 eyesight. They might not have needed glasses, but they always knew there was something wrong with their vision. It just wasn't quite right. Okay, good. So today we're talking about you know kids and some of the new things that you can do. Um, let's let's begin though okay. with it, it, you say it's a big problem. Yes. And kids fall behind in their learning. Yes. Both math, reading, and everything. And, and this was interesting. You say that that the eye testing you get at the school level is just yes. the distance. Tell me about that. Okay. Explain that. It's what they call what we like to call and want everyone to know about the myth of twenty twenty. All right. People hear twenty twenty and they think that's perfect vision. So the child was told twenty twenty. Yes. And what it really is, is that's just sight, and that's just the mere ability to see at distance. Okay. But real vision is the ability to comprehend and to understand any information that comes to you through your eyes and then to act on it. That's very complicated. So right now, kids are just getting the distance. Yes, the just di distance. What do you call that, just farsighted? We call it acuity, and it's done on that big eye chart with the E on it that we call a Snellen eye chart. So you say that's not enough? That's just not enough, Randy. It's so important for everyone to realize that's just distance vision. And what are we asking our children to do every day in school? Read. Look up close read and maintain that ability to see close up and then be able to look back and forth like at the whiteboard now they nowadays they don't have blackboards whiteboards far back and forth focus and they don't test the children's vision for close up and for eye tracking as you read across that needs to be tested this is very important so parents that are watching this if your yes. kids are having trouble in school uh, and they've been told their vision is fine, yes. right? Yes. May not be the case. That means their vision may not be fine. Absolutely. Give some symptoms. I mean, how do you know? Okay, so your kid has been told, uh, you know, and I have a nine-year-old. Yes. You've been told your, your, your child's vision is fine, mm -hmm. but, but they're having tr trouble in reading and, and, and word math problems. What are some of the symptoms? These are the children that we, we call smart in everything except school. There's just something about these children that Interesting. You, okay. you know they're intelligent, you talk to them at home, and then you hear at school, well, he just, like a patient I just saw, he 
can't pay attention in school. As he reads along the line, he skips or loses his place. Or he can't copy correctly from the board. Or he says, I can read for maybe five minutes, and then after a while the words start moving, or I lose my place, or I'm concentrating so hard I forgot what I read. So their comprehension, reading comprehension, is, is, so does not reflect their intelligence. So if your child is telling you after five minutes they're bored out of their mind, or, they, or all of a sudden the words are becoming blurry. Yes. yes. Because I knew, after we got off the phone, uh -huh. I know somebody with a, with, with, with a kid that has a tough time reading. Yes. And they told me this yes, symptom. Yes, that happened. And so they're going to get their eyes tested. Reading so is read. so, so important. And in the first and second grades, you really go to school to learn to read. But in third, fourth, fifth, th those grades, it's all about using reading to learn. So if you struggle at all with your vision, getting your two eyes to coordinate. And the kids don't know, obviously. Children they've only seen have that way. no clue. And so it's up to us as parents everyone listening, as parents or teachers or even relatives, to please check your children for these symptoms. If they have any symptoms, please bring them in. And, and at, uh, so they could take them into the university. At the eye care need, center. You need more people to know that they the can go to the university. At Pomona, the eye care center. In Pomona. Huh? And the other thing is, you, you know, it, for somebody that is, uh, you know, really low on funds, not a lot of money. Yes, yes. You work yes, with them. We do. Is that right? I mean, yes. eye exams could be as low as... We have a sliding scale. So we are encouraging everyone to come in, and not just children. We've been working with a lot of college students lately that never realized their two eyes didn't work well together. It's what we call convergence insufficiency. There's been a, a new study right out of the university in San Diego that says... Three, it's three times more likely if you have this convergence insufficiency where your eyes don't pull in, you're going to have attention deficit disorder. Because you can't see. It's not because you so can't see. So when a kid opens see, a book, a kid opens a book concentrate. and to them it's just blurry, yes. a little bit blurry. Well, maybe at and first it looks okay, but after a couple minutes. It's because of the coordination of the yes. eyes is a little bit off. Yes, Randy, yes. And obviously you're going to be bored if you can't look at what's... Yes. And so they may be misdiagnosed yes. as ADD, ADHD. Plus yes. the kid's self-esteem suffers, you say. Absolutely. Because what happens is these children, every child entering kindergarten, right, is excited to go. We yeah, all know yeah, that. Okay. But what happens between second, third, fourth grade? You'll start to see the child no longer wants to go or they don't feel good about school. And it usually comes down to they're not a good reader. So what can we do to encourage this? Number one is, is have their vision checked. Have their vision checked. There are things that you can do to yes. help reverse this or, or put them together with the right kind of glasses or whatever. Yes, yes. Is that right? Yes. It's not just glasses. What we're offering now is optometric vision therapy, which is the step beyond getting in comprehensive Teaching eye Teaching their eyes to become more coordinated? Yes. And not everybody needs this type of therapy, but the message we want to put out there is there is hope for these children that are struggling. Now this is very interesting. If you're just tuning in, we're talking about kids and vision problems and how it could affect them in school and later on in life. Your work, and you've been doing this, Dr. Remick, for you know 25 years. Yes. We were talking in the green room that you worked at a juvenile hall setting. Yes, I did. Tell me about that. I worked at the Vision Perception Clinic, which was on site at the San Bernardino County Juvenile Hall for quite a few years. And these kids had vision problems, you said. Yes. Yes, what we found over the years was a pattern that these young men really had very good IQs, either average or above average IQs, but the pattern was they had always struggled with reading, reading more than math. Okay. Oftentimes they were good musicians, good at art. They had a lot of good talents, some of them at sports, but most of them had this near point eye teeming difficulty and they couldn't focus. They were not, did not have trouble seeing far away. So they, they always passed the eye chart test, but they almost saw too good far away. They were what we called farsighted. Okay. And the problem came in, not that they couldn't see the, the letters on the page to read, but that over time they couldn't get any meaning out of it because their eyes did not coordinate and focus. So to the them, same. did they describe it where the letters are kind of on top of each they, other? They would way? say that, and they their eye tracking was off, so as they lose, they read along, it wasn't fluent. So these kids in juvenile hall, 
Okay. Yes. So they were never, I mean, nobody addressed their eyes? They were you all. You say seven out of ten of these kids yes. have bad vision. Yes. So you got kids that are behind in school. Yes. They're looked at as not being the smartest kids in school. Potentially they act out. Yes, because of frustration. And one thing leads to another. And so I remember talking to this one. Interesting, uh, very interesting. One young man, and he uh, said, why am I here? You're wasting my time. Because we had an eye exam chair right in a cell in the juvenile hall, and we would have them come in. And he said, why am I wasting my time? I have 20-20. I said, well, let me ask you a couple questions. When you read along the line, do you ever lose your place? He goes, yeah, how'd you know that? I bet. I said, I bet if you read after about five minutes, you don't get any meaning out of the reading. He's like, how did you know that? Are you a mind reader? And I said, no, I just, I just had a feeling. As it turned out, he said that as he read, his two eyes, the muscles weren't working right. So one eye would see up here and one eye would see here. He had had double vision the whole time while he was trying to learn to read. Three times he asked to go to the school nurse and she tested him with the eye chart test and he Just always Just distance passed. only. Yeah, because they'd go like this and go like this. This is interesting to me. And he had double vision. And so he was so frustrated that they would say, try harder. You're not reading, trying hard enough. He, the more he tried, the more double vision he got. Well, once we finally saw him at the age of 17 at the juvenile hall, we were able to prescribe special prism glasses, made it so that he could read. And then we did the optometric vision therapy with, with the special uh, uh, procedures that we do. His eyes were taught to coordinate. He was able to uh, graduate from the program, got his GED, and now he's a successful businessman. He did not go to the California Youth Authority. And I talked with the uh, juvenile court judge that was thrilled with the results. Is your, uh, let's, let's take one, okay. the first graders and second graders in America, of the ones that are, that are so-called have learning disabilities or mm -hmm. ADD or mm -hmm. ADHD when it comes to reading, how many of those do you think have vision problems, in your opinion? Give I've, us your insight there. If the Half? Yeah. If the child is really excelling at reading, the likelihood that they have one of these undiagnosed vision problems is low. Okay. But if for some reason they're struggling or they can't seem to sit still or they seem to be daydreaming, then the likelihood goes way up. Would you say 70% of kids that, the, 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 the teachers saying your first grader, your second grader, just doesn't, uh, tunes out of our lessons in reading and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. history and, mm -hmm. do you think it's 70% have a vision problem? It could be right, that What do you high. think though? I, what do you think? I, What's your hunch? I think so. If they lose their place and skip lines, they're having trouble concentrating, they're having, they seem to be slow and yet they're an intelligent child, I think the the odds Get are tested. very high. Okay, so t take me through the process. Okay, they okay. they go to the university. Yes. They call, yes. and, and we'll have the numbers at the bottom good, of the screen. Good. They call, and then what? Take me through that day. What's that look like? The that very concept? first visit is going to be a comprehensive vision examination. So number one, we're going to check for eye health. Okay. And that's very thorough. Number two is we're going to check to see what we call the refractive status. That's are you nearsighted or farsighted or have astigmatism. And then third step, we're going to check how are their eyes focusing, tracking, and eye teaming. So we'll definitely check for that condition. And eye teaming meaning, I mean, how do you detect that? That means whether, that, that means if, if words are getting jumbled together. Yes. The eyes are not coordinated or something. We is that, have is that what you're saying? Yes, we have special tests. Okay. And as optometrists, we do they wear things? Yes. They're looking through. Yes, you'll look through that big machine and you'll hear the clicking, and we can test and see how the eyes line up. We call it eye alignment, and then we'll either prescribe glasses to help you on that day for your child, and we'll have a consultation, or we'll recommend you come back for visit two, which is an optometric vision therapy evaluation. Do you have stories where, where, where parents will call the university when it's all said and done, they're fitted with glasses or yes, after the exit, yes. where they say, oh my goodness, my kid is now doing well in school, yes. loves to read. I mean, you do have those stories? Yes, we do. Let me tell you about a little girl. Uh, I talked with her mother recently. Okay. She was uh, five years old and she, they, everyone thought she was fine until it came for P day. Now what P day meant was they, they were studying different things based on the letter of the alphabet. Okay. So on P day, they were gonna wear pajamas to school and become pirates. 
So they put the the teacher put the eye patch on on her. Yeah. And she started to scream because she couldn't see. No one knew she had a lazy eye. And it's what we call amblyopia. So when she came in, we were able to fit her with glasses, but we realized that because it was thick on one one side and not the other side because her two eyes are different. We eventually ended up fitting her with a contact lens. And then after that, we realized the two eyes weren't working well together. And so she got uh, optometric vision therapy, taught how to do that. Now she is in, I think, second grade and she's a star. Okay. Yeah, she's really doing well. And then what about the people that have, like you say, great vision from a distance? Yes. And but but problem reading. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have stories where they say my child couldn't read before and now they can? Oh yes, little boy that I recently talked with okay. his mother. He was really struggling, and she's like, "Oh, but he seems like such a smart boy." But he just he wasn't catching on to reading. So what we did is we did fit him with just glasses that he wear for reading. But then we would have him come in once a week for the optometric vision therapy. And he learned how to coordinate his eyes, and he no longer reverses letters. He reads very well, and he feels really, really good about himself. And you believe he's a lot of people. I mean, that I do. there's a lot of kids out there, and so they just get farther and farther behind. A word on self-esteem to parents watching this. Yes. How important is it that they're at least at the same level as their peers, as the other kids? Absolutely. I spent years, as I said, working with young children but also working at the juvenile hall. So I got to talk to some of the young men that said it usually started in like second, third, fourth grade when they were pulled out, put in a special reading program. Somehow they felt like they just weren't smart enough. And because they didn't get the near point, what we call near point vision correction that they needed, they never caught up. So they just never felt like they were smart. You're just always behind, and it's they one thing me. after another. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. Uh, more about your center okay. and some of the some of the technology you use to identify uh, these vision problems. You're watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today we're talking about what every parent needs to know about their kids. Their learning problems may be connected, directly connected, to a nearsighted vision problem. We'll be right back. Tried all sorts of cover-ups for bad breath? Try the science of Breathorex. Only Breathorex has Zytex. It attacks the cause of bad breath, keeps working for hours. It's clinically proven for real fresh breath. Get non-prescription Breathorex from your dental hygienist and now at fine stores everywhere. You are watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're talking about kids and vision. And with us, we have the, uh, a professor, and the director of community outreach at Western University. Uh, of health sciences, is that right? Did I say it right? Yes, you did, Randy. Okay, and uh, and your role then is to let the public know that you can take advantage of the university setting. Yes. Because you need more and more patients, kids, and and seniors. Yes. To go there, so that way the other students can learn. Yeah, absolutely. Is that right? Absolutely, because we are trying to train, and we are training the optometrists of the future. And for people that don't have the money really tight budget. You have kind of a sliding scale yes, we do. based on income. Yes. So everybody should be able to afford. Yes, we're really encouraging everyone to call and make appointments to come on in. Okay, I, you know, I think that the thing that if anybody's watched this at all, the, the, the most incredible thing is there are kids in first and second grade when they learn to read, Yes. that the only eye testing that's done is distance. Correct. But kids, that's on the playground, but or sitting at the back <laughs> of the class looking at the whiteboard, yes. but up close reading is not being tested. Yes for vision, is that right? That is true. It really is hard to believe. It is really hard to believe in today's world because everything is close up reading and concentrating. But we, the school nurses are not required to do it. And as we all know, they don't really have And you're time. finding like 70% of the time, these kids can't see up close. Or their eyes aren't yeah. coordinated to the point. They have an un, what we call an undiagnosed vision problem. And it doesn't mean they can't see up close. It just means their eyes aren't coordinating, focusing, or tracking. At first and second grade level at yes. that young age. Because the reading process is so complicated, you really need very, uh, very, very good visual skills to be able to be a successful And reader. you say you've seen reversals. Oh, yes, like, I have. Uh, There's a little boy that uh, I just recently talked with his mother, and he used to be not want to go to school anymore. He started out in kindergarten wanting to go, but starting second grade, 
Mommy, I don't want to go. I have a stomach ache. Okay. And she'd have to bring him, and she didn't understand what was wrong. And she knew the teacher had said he was a smart little boy, but for some reason he was just slow. So they, they tested him, and he had to go be pulled out. Put in a special class. Yeah, put in a special class, and he just wasn't happy anymore. Well, thank goodness she talked to a friend of hers that said, go to Western University Eye Care Center. She came in. We did fit him with reading glasses, but we gave him the weekly sessions of vision therapy, and it was amazing. Randy wouldn't believe. I mean, do you see changes in this wouldn't believe the changes in him. He is so happy now. He kind of skips in. He doesn't write the letters backwards anymore, and he's enjoying reading. I think he was reading Diary of a Wimpy Kid or something like okay. that. Okay. He's enjoying reading now. And, and so, you know, dyslexia is a completely different thing here. Yeah. We're talking about close-up vision problems that's not being tested throughout the U.S. And, you know, it's like most people, right? You don't do anything until there's obvious symptoms. Yes. Like a kid says, I can't see, it's blurry. Yes. But the kids don't see it as the blurry, you're saying. The kids don't know. They're not going to tell you it looks blurry because they don't have anything to compare it so with. So if your child says, and, 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 and let's give a recap because we're out of time, that oh. if they say after, you know, four or five minutes, I'm bored, this is boring, I don't get it, they can't, you know, bad recall. Yes. Tell me more. Finish this. Okay. What that means is they're not uh, processing the visual information properly. Because vision is more than just seeing. It's how you interpret and comprehend what the Im visual information coming into the... But eyes. if they're reading out loud and they're saying the words, doesn't that mean that they're able to see the words? It's see, yes. But that's just sight. That's not real vision. Okay. So then, then how, if the child could read out loud... Mm -hmm then how, how could that be detected as a reading pro or, or as a visual problem? That's the part I'm not getting here. Okay, the problem is that the information, they might be able to read it, but it could be choppy or they're losing their place. But they're saying it out loud with their mouth. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. So what's happening is they're just not processing the information visually. And because it's not that clear visually. Visual in the brain. Because okay. vision doesn't take place here in the eyes, does it? Interesting. It takes place in the brain. So when we do our comprehensive vision examinations uh, and visual processing testing, we can test for this. Are there any home, and we're out of time, but are there any oh. home tests that you can give your kids? And maybe it's just what we just talked about, but uh, to test your kids on your own? The best thing to do is get a symptom checklist. And uh, those are simple questions that you can ask them. And one of them would just be, as you're reading along, do you ever lose your place or skip lines? Do the words and doesn't ever... everybody do that or no? No, you're not supposed okay. to. <laughs> okay, I mean, I don't do it, I'm just saying. Right, but don't right. all little kids do that? Not really. I mean, Interesting. the okay. goal is you want them to be able to read along and read smoothly. And oftentimes they, they just can't. So in switching from line to line to line, if they get mixed up, their eyes are not focusing on that page right. correctly. Very interesting. Right. What else? What's another one? That uh, as they're copying from the board, Near to far, they lose their place. What do you mean copying on the board? Okay, because a lot of times the teacher will, nowadays they even use projectors in okay. classrooms or they'll use whiteboards and they'll have the children copy down what they're copying. Well, that's a looking back and forth, focusing, and if they lose their place or they're slower than the other children doing that, that can be a symptom. So I guess the message is get tested. Get yes. your kids tested. Everybody can afford it mm -hmm. and uh, because it's based on income. Mm -hmm. And how soon is it identified? I mean, I mean, right then and there, and it's good news. Oh, yes. It's a positive it's, it's news. It's very good news. Be, I've had so many parents be so excited and say, my goodness, I always knew there was something holding him back. I love it. That's yeah. interesting. So you're saying good news. It's uh, good news. It's Mrs. very Jones. treatable. And yeah. the type of therapy that we do for the children and even the college students or adults is fun. Now, as far as, far as optometry centers go, yes. are you state of the art? Absolutely. I mean, you have all the new stuff? Absolutely. Western University Eye Care Center has all the latest because we were just equipped this clinic with the brand new equipment. And we have a fabulous clinical faculty at Western University College of Optometry. Do you still work with patients sometimes? Or I do. You're more, oh, you do? I do. Because Kids mostly? I, yes, I do. I just, even though I'm teaching our optometry students as a professor, I still see patients because I, I just love it, Randy. Are you ever surprised with the results oh, that yeah. by taking care of their vision, how much better they do in school? Are you ever surprised? I'm surprised every day. Really? And I love it. There's, there's so many children out there struggling with these undiagnosed vision problems that don't realize. 
and I, I, it makes me happy every day. But the day challenge is, you know, I guess the challenge is parents need to just, just it, it, rule out, let's see if it's their vision. So, period. If your kid is having a tough time in school, yes. first, first grade until, through high school, yes. if they have never had an up-close vision test, which you're not going to get in the schools, Correct. you might as well check it out. Or if they right? ever, Am I understand or, that correctly? Or even if you've had a, a, a suspicion that they could be attention deficit or uh, anything like that relating to attention, it's been shown that uh, one out of uh, every three ch children with the attention deficit disorder have some type of vision problem. Sometimes, is that right? Yeah. Okay, well, very interesting. I want to thank you for coming <laughs> on the show. So if they want more information, go to the website. Yes. Uh, they can make an appointment through the website or call the number on the website and, uh, and get started right away. Oh, yeah, we're encouraging everyone and you to need call. More, you, you need we more people. We want everybody to come. Okay, good. To and your our, training our, facility, our new all clinic. the new stuff. They don't have to pay more for this. No, and In we fact, have less, fa actually. faculty like me, very, very experienced teaching all the students. So. All right. We encourage everyone to come in. Thank you so much for coming Thank to the show. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you. You've been watching the Wellness Herald Leader in Medical News and Information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this again online, you can visit our website at wellnesshour.com, and you can put in Dr. Remick, which may be tough to spell. You could just put eye correction or kids and vision problems or optometry. You could find it there. For now, I wish you good help.